In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at a debunker who is so skilled <laughs> that most of the people he debunks, they don't even see him come in. So, so let's find out together if the Mars Perseverance landing footage can be debunked by Dubai. Go nuts on my nuts. So I wanted to start today's video off with a huge thank you to every single person that went to the trouble on my last video of pointing out that I actually said prosperity when I meant to say posterity. <laughs> Oops. Tidy! Last week, NASA, the biggest black budget black hole in existence, sucking in $52 million of American taxpayer money every single day, just spent $2.3 of your dollars to allegedly land a remote control car on Mars for the fifth time. Yes, the multi-billion dollar charade of landing on Mars has been happening since 1976. Well, there seems to be a theme forming here. Level Earth Observer calls it a pantomime. Eric Dubay calls it a charade. You do realize that it isn't a game. It's very dangerous and very expensive to do what NASA do. But I can't help noticing that you both seem extremely butthurt about the amount of money this has cost. What exactly do you think they should be doing with their $52 million a day budget? Trying to prove that the Earth is flat? And thanks to the gullible, unquestioning masses, enthralled and duped by these ridiculous Hollywood performances, they will most likely continue for decades to come. And talking about gullible, unquestioning people, how many of your 200 proofs actually prove something other than the fact that you're a complete moron? To begin with, the tiny, reddish, circular light in the sky known as Mars is not a spherical, terra firma world millions of miles away capable of landing a rover on. Oh, please no. Don't tell me we found our first flat Marser. All of the so-called planets were known to the ancients as wandering stars because they differ from the fixed stars in their relative motions only. To them, stars were not spherical worlds millions of miles away or suns trillions of miles away, as we are brainwashed to believe they are today. Oh yeah, we should always believe the ancients, because so much of what they believed back in ancient times has been proven to be true time after time. Like for example, the breast milk is coagulated menstrual blood, or the traveling by train made you go insane, or that witches used to keep pet penises. Not so much wrong with that, I've, I've got one my- Down boy. I've still got one myself. The Masonic magicians at NASA and the other world space agencies, using lying actor knots and Hollywood tricks like green screens, wires, harnesses, and endless amounts of CGI images. Well, I wasn't ready. Could you say that again, please, Mr. Dubey? Endless amounts of C-G-I. Through pseudoscience books and programs, mass media and public education, universities and government propaganda have systematically indoctrinated the entire world into believing what is nothing but an elaborate piece of science fiction. But isn't indoctrination trying to teach a person or a group of people something uncritically, and uncritically obviously means to believe something whether it's right or wrong? So wouldn't that be more applicable to you, a belief system? As you can clearly see for yourself with a bit of research, a telescope or high zoom camera, all things which the ancients didn't have any access to because they hadn't been invented, and you said yourself, Mr. Dubay, earlier on in this video, that the ancients knew. So how did they know? Now I know that the P900 is an older model of camera, but I didn't think it was that old. Slightly off topic, but that was actually a photograph of the world's first camera. Who took it? And with what? <laughs> it is obvious that the light in the sky known as Mars is not some science fiction desert planet millions of miles away. Finally, we agree on something. No, you're right. It's not. It's the fourth planet from the sun. It's the second smallest planet in the solar system. And we know it affectionately as the red planet. The CGI images NASA shows of a spherical world are clearly and admittedly not photographs and look nothing like Mars when seen through a telescope. Mars not looking the same through a telescope as it looks to the camera lens of the Mars Perseverance rover, which is actually on a planet which is currently 217 million kilometers away from Earth. 
I just don't understand why that would be. Meanwhile, the actual photographs NASA claims are coming from this completely other world look exactly like they are coming from Devon Island, Canada. How dare Devon Island slightly resemble the surface of Mars, which may or may not be why NASA and the Canadian Space Agency use it to train for missions to Mars? Maybe I'm onto something there? With a red tint added in post-processing. There is nothing being shown in NASA's photographs of Mars that cannot easily be faked on Earth. Now this is something that Flat Earthers and people like Eric Dubay say all the time and it's always confused me. First of all, do they realize that CGI stands for Computer Generated Imagery? So essentially, any photograph taken by your smartphone, digital camera is technically a computer generated image making it CGI. So isn't it then feasible that somebody from your community, Mr. Dubay, has done this image themselves to try and discredit the images coming from Mars? Or that somebody has done the reverse of what you were claiming and they've got a genuine image of Mars and they have altered it in Photoshop to take away the red hue, making it more closely resemble Devon Island? And given the lack of skepticism or scrutiny from the gullible masses, they barely have to fake any evidence too. Just give them a computer screen of a CGI parachute with a CGI rover landing on a CGI Mars and film a bunch of compartmentalized NASA 20-something employees straight out of space camp getting giddy and high-fiving each other. And that is literally all it takes. Come here, I've got a question. Do you really think people like Eric Dubay believe this absolute crap that they say in their videos? NASA employs 17,000 people, approximately, and that's without government contractors. Are they, are they all in on the big secret? Yes, that's right. How do you think NASA sends and receives all data to and from this remote control car? Well, I think the more important question is how do people like you think they're doing it? Two tin cans and a length of string? Let's see what you've got to say. I can't wait. They apparently have internet technology so strong and fast that they can operate a remote control vehicle from tens of millions of miles away. Do we, the public, have any independent evidence whatsoever that such technology actually exists? I don't know why I expected any different, to be perfectly honest with you. Do you, Eric Dubay, have any independent evidence that the Earth is flat? No, of course you don't. And it doesn't stop you from believing that it is? Of course not. And it isn't necessary. Again, because the science fiction indoctrinated masses are so bedazzled by their pseudoscientific priests at NASA that they don't require things like proof or evidence. And I say again, that doesn't stop you flat earthers. And what has a giraffe and Post Malone got to do with any of this? Is there any point in me actually explaining this? I guess you guys will listen, but these flat earth morons, probably not so much. It's not that difficult. They basically use UHF antennas. There's three of them on the rover. The rover communicates with the Mars orbiters and then the orbiters send the signal back to Earth. It takes between 5 and 20 minutes for the signal to arrive depending on the position of the planets. Now let's talk about the supposed parachutes deployed by these rovers when landing. NASA says the surface pressure on Mars is only three-tenths of one percent of the surface pressure on Earth, and equivalent to the pressure at about 23 miles above Earth. This fact alone blows their hoax out of the water. Any skydiver knows there is not nearly enough air matter at that pressure to provide any kind of lift for opening and billowing out the parachutes NASA uses to land its Mars probes. No parachute ever devised has been able to successfully deploy at that altitude. They simply stream straight back, then never fill the rest of the way down. Did you find anybody who's actually done a skydive onto the surface of Mars so that you could verify what you just said? Parachutes used on this mission were designed specifically for use in Mars's atmosphere. So they kind of thought of that beforehand. The parachute design is driven by loads, the forces the parachute experiences as it fully inflates. And the loads are calculated using the atmospheric density of Mars. Strangely enough, not the atmospheric density of Earth. Joe Kittinger's record highest, fastest, and longest parachute dive from the Earth's upper atmosphere had him free-falling from only 19 miles high for 15 minutes at 767 miles per hour, and his drogue chute proved useless and offered no deceleration. 
Ooh, who did you check that maths with? Me? Now I don't pretend to be a mathematician, but I do know how to use a calculator. And at 767 miles an hour, it would have taken him 1 minute 29 seconds to travel those 19 miles. So I would hazard a guess and say that an inadequate drone parachute would have been the least of his worries. And just to add to that, I've got to be honest, I'm very shocked that you've used Joseph Kittinger as your example, because he was the first human being to actually independently witness the curvature of the Earth. You know, you being a flat earther and all. Yet NASA would have us believe, for example, that their 2008 Phoenix's drone parachute managed to somehow slow it down from 12,738 miles per hour to 123 miles per hour in just 2.86 minutes before its final landing. I know, crazy. It's absolutely amazing what you can achieve if you design something specifically to work within the atmosphere of Mars and then use it on Mars. In other words, NASA is claiming to do something on Mars that we have no evidence is even possible on Earth. But they're not. They're not claiming anything. They are showing us. And what they are showing us is that there was a problem using a parachute to land on Mars because the atmosphere is that much less than it is on Earth. And they overcame that issue through design innovation and actual smart people. NASA must have since gotten the memo because this time, for perseverance, they claim instead that they fitted it with a special aero shell and heat shield, which allows the quote, drag of the Martian atmosphere to do all the heavy lifting for them. Well, I'm sure there was a memo, but not in the way you're implying. This is what's known as learning from experience, i.e. if you make a mistake, it teaches you not to make that same mistake again. So through development, NASA have discovered that by using this new method, it assists with the safe descent of the surface rover or the Perseverance rover in this case. Somehow slowing the craft from over 12,500 miles per hour to just 1,000 miles per hour before deploying the parachute. But again, even delving into these facts and figures is superfluous because NASA simply shows us CGI pictures of a car on a parachute and nobody questions it anyway. Now I'm starting to feel a little bit uncomfortable, almost as if I owe you, my lovely viewers, an apology because the title of this video the Mars rover debunked, or whatever I choose to call it, by Eric Dubay, seems to be some form of false advertising. Because so far, all he's done is go nah uh and fake CGI. He's not provided any evidence that actually supports his so-called debunking of this mission. All he's done is scream fake and use my favorite catchphrase, CGI. These are all smoking gun pieces of evidence that NASA is faking these supposed Mars landings. But again, without a critically thinking and informed populace, we will continue to be duped by people like Eric Dubay. Because that's essentially all he's doing. He just makes videos like this with absolutely no substance, no evidence, no nothing. And all he ever does is scream CGI and fake which is not evidence and it is not proving what we can see being provided to us by NASA as being false. All his videos do is prove just how much of a complete idiot he is. And unfortunately, the 88,000 people that follow him seem to be equally as stupid. I'm the Creaky Blinder and I'll see you next time. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. All right, all right, what's this next? But before you do, make sure you subscribe. By order of the Creaky Blind.